morning, everyone. Welcome to our Fellowship of Worship. Just like the Psalmist David, I am inviting you to give glory to our God. Let's ascribe to Him the glory that is due to His name. Let's sing praises. Let's honor Him with our uh, songs, with our hearts, with our mind, with our everything. Let's welcome our praise and worship team. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope.
is it in me? Sometimes I just don't know what keeps me in your love. Why you never let me go? And though you're in me now, I fall and hurt you still, my Lord. Please show me how to know just how you feel. You have forgiven me so many times it seems I feel I'm not what you might call A worthy Christian after all And though I loved you so Temptation finds its way to me Teach me to trust in you with all of my Not only when I feel this way I've never known a man Would give his life for sinners like me And yet because he loves us so He's promised us eternity We can hear the promise in me Is a faith and just believe Teach us to trust in you With all our hearts Good morning, SLCC. Today is the first Sunday of November. Ten months have passed. Next month po, we will be celebrating Christmas. 
The pandemic situation seems to be improving and many things are going back to normal. We need to be thankful for the Lord's continued protection and His faithful provision to all of us. Yet, we continue to exercise caution and we continue to observe the important health protocols of masks and social distancing. A sound body with strong immunity and a sound mind with biblical truths reminding us of our real worth as God's children is encouraged for everyone. Join me as we thank the Lord for His many blessings. Let us pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we have no words to express the gratitude we feel for all you have done the last 10 months. You have given yourself to us in Jesus. You have given us your life. You have loved us long before we were aware of you. You have been gracious to us in our failings and never held our sins against us. You have poured out the blessings of life upon us. You have given us food to eat clothes to wear, friends and family who love us, homes in which to live, and so many other things we so often take for granted or are tempted to think we have gotten for ourselves through our own diligence. You have given us so much more. You have given us the privilege to live in a free land where we can worship according to the dictates of our own conscience. You have given us precious health amid this life threatening pandemic. You have given us a sound mind. You have filled us with joy. You also have filled our lives with purpose and meaning by making us agents of redemption and ministers of your gospel. You have given us an open heaven and the ability to speak to you in prayer anytime. You have given us your spirit, your wisdom, your guidance, our hearts overflow with all the good things you have given us, all the ways you have shown your love and shown us that we are deeply loved. We ask you to make us truly thankful to always take time to say what it has meant to us, that you have shown your goodness to us. You have made us beloved children and treated us like no earthly parent ever could. And so we thank you. We are eternally grateful to you. Lord, speak to us this Sunday morning, and may your word pierce our hearts and help us respond in gratefulness to all that you have done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You are the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high.
Wow, ilang tulog na lang po at uh, Pasko na no? At uh, nawa ang bawat isa ay patuloy na nag-iingat uh, Sa kabila po ng pagbaba ng uh, cases ng uh, COVID uh, Huwag niyo hong ibababa ang inyong pananggalang Patuloy niyo rin pong isuot ang ating face mask Practice still the uh, Uh, physical distancing as well as yung ating paghuhugas ng kamay. Huwag niyo pong pababayaan na tayo po ay malagay sa alanganin. Let's be uh, prudent in terms of protecting ourselves as well as our family. As I'm always saying, as we do this, we are showing our love, not just for ourselves but also for our loved ones at dun sa ating mga nakakasalamuha. Last Sunday, we studied A very important factor when it comes to coping with these unlikely circumstances. And that is a high view of God. A high view of God help us live our lives while we are in the midst of a difficult situation. And I'm not just referring to uh, COVID-19. Kahit na ano pong uh, kalagayan natin, pag meron po tayong magandang pananaw when it comes to our view of God, when we have this high view of God, Uh, kahit na ano pa po ang nangyayari Ang mga sirkumstansyang ito Ay magiging dahilan para lalo tayong tumibay sa ating pananampalataya Ulitin ko lang po A high view of God Helps us live our lives and cope While we are in the midst of difficult situation And circumstances that test our faith You see our standing or our understanding of who God is will make the big difference. We learn that whatever our circumstances are, we can wait on the Lord, and the remarkable results will follow. Have you realized that this situation we are in right now help us or helps us evaluate what we really value in our lives? You see, meron po akong kilalang isang OFW family that they decided to go um, to go home and let go yung kanilang mataas na sweldo because of the present COVID situation. And the ruling in that country is they, they, they are seeing it na magiging difficult for their family. It will jeopardize or it might, should I say, jeopardize their family. They, it might hurt their family. Ang nakita ko po doon, they value their family more than the high pay. Or vice versa, yung marami po tayo mga kababayan, mga OFWs, that they need to sacrifice their time with their families in order for them to really survive, in order for them to have a, a, a good amount of money that they can use para sa kanilang pamilya. So, pwedeng, pwede pong ano eh, i-let go mo yung isang magandang bagay in order for you to attain a better better life, lalo na po sa panahon natin ngayon. Some made the right choice to let go of their valuable uh, items for a far more valuable reason. Some have a different line of thought. 
Merong iba naman na hindi nila mabitiwan yung mga valuables na ito. Ito kanilang mahalagang bagay na ito para sa kanila for some personal reason. And sad to say, um, kahit mga Kristiyano ay merong ganitong mga pananaw. Uh, even among many Christians, we face similar situation. There are those who cannot just let go of their valuables like their dreams, like their ambitions, or even riches, yung trabaho, or the present uh, power that they have. Even if when God is asking to let them go because God has another plan for their life showing their kaya lang problema, yung response nila, they don't want to let it go. And that shows their poor concept of our God. They have a low view of God. You see, our grip to those things that ungodly preoccupies or even control our minds and our attention, yung mga bagay na ito, it hinders, uh, it hinders us to, to exercise or to even stretch our faith. Sometimes just even the thought of losing them sends flashes of panic to our soul and, and, and to our whole being. And because, because of that, we, we even clutch them more tightly and we don't want to let them go. We count on them as if our lives depend on them. And I like what Corey Ten Boom, said, Ten Boom says, I've learned, he, she said, I've learned that we must hold everything loosely. Because when I grip it tightly, when you, when you hold it tightly, it hurts when the father Prize my finger loose and take it from me. Listen, my dear brethren, I know that every one of us holds something that is very valuable, but, but please do not allow them to preoccupy us to the point of losing our sight on the true source of all, and that is God. Because if we do so, I believe just like what Corey uh, was saying, God will force us to release it, yet He will Try our fingers to let it go. Why? Bakit, bakit niya ginagawa yung mga bagay na ito? So that when our hands are finally empty and the pain of letting go has passed, we will realize that God is all we really need. Ulitin ko lang po mga kapatid. Ha? Kapag yung pong mga bagay na yun ay hinayaan nating mawala na sa ating mga kamay, Yung kamay natin ay magkakaroon na ng tinatawag na kamalayan na kahit wala yung mga bagay na yun, we are still going to survive because it is God who we really need. Siya lang talaga yun. Kaya nga ang tanong eh, are you holding something that is very valuable to you that causes you to be hindered in serving God fully? Do you have a possession that controls you? Or how about your occupation? Or maybe your plans or your dreams? Or maybe a kind of relationship that does not please God? Are you afraid of letting it go and let God? This morning, I'd like to bring you to a very familiar historical narrative that will illustrate to us the true meaning of letting it go and let God. I'd like you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 22. You're very familiar uh, uh, you're very familiar with this passage. This is about the uh, the uh, the uh, testing of Abraham. God tested Abraham. And in this passage that we're going to look at, we will be reminded of this great truth. In order for us to cope with this situation, let go and let God. Learn to cope let go and let God. So let's read verse 1 here. Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham. Now I'd like you to underline that. If you have your Bibles with you, you underline you po yung first part na ito. God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering and uh, on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Verse 3, So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took 
uh, two of his young men with him, and Isaac, his son, and he split wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, even this morning we come to you, and we surrender to you our hearts, our mind, and help us, Lord, to understand this story, and make us, Lord, uh, um, willing to obey whatever you're going to tell us through this passage. Thank you for the life of Abraham and even Isaac. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. We commit this study this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. All right, here is a classic illustration of uh, letting go of something that is very, very valuable. Abraham was asked to give not just something, but someone who is very important to him one that is very very precious to him and in this passage we, we we're going to see that abraham was tested and what's the test give isaac to me if you know the story of abraham you know that this is very very difficult but what principles can we glean from this narrative that will help us understand the concept of letting go and letting God, or the concept of releasing to God anything that is very valuable. Tandaan po natin, ha? ang bawat isa sa atin, meron tayong hinahawakan na napakahalagang buhay, napakahalaga sa ating buhay. And God, uh, there would be time in our lives that God will be asking us to release it, to let it go. Or the concept of releasing to God anything that is very valuable is not remote na mangyari po sa atin. I would like to share to you three timeless principles uh, this morning. And in these principles, we will find that real testing is from the Lord. And the obedience of it will bring real blessing. Real testing uh, is from the Lord and the obedience of it will bring real blessing. Always remember this, the Lord will always honor true obedience or this 100% obedience. Now let's go to the first principle. First principle is this, tests in our lives are inevitable and God is the source of them. Let me repeat that. Tests in our lives are inevitable and God is the source of them. Now look at the passage. It said in verse 1, Now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham. Take note of that. Yun yung pinapa-underline ko sa inyo kanina. God tested Abraham. He said, Take now your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the land, go to the land of Moriah and offer Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Now, pag tinignan mo itong command na ito, lalo na po sa panahon natin ngayon, we can consider this as, a, as the greatest test in the life of Abraham. The testing came after receiving the promised seed. Di ba, meron pa nga ako si God sa kanya. And, 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 he received this together with Sarah. Na received niya ito after more than 25 years of waiting. The test was no joke. It was a real one. It had to defy logic. It had to do, or it had to be something Abraham wanted to resist. Kung kahit ikaw po ang makakarinig ng ganitong uh, kahilingan, you're going to have that kind of. Uh, a resistance sa heart mo at sa mind mo. Something that is very valuable is being asked from you to give it to Him. Kaya lang yung, yung, yung hinihingi, hindi ganun kadali. Because the thought of this, the uh, uh, killing your son for, as a burnt sacrifice is something that is really, uh, something that will really bother you. Huh? Uh, Kung babalikan po natin yung story natin ito, yung, yung isa sa mga anak niya, si Ismael, yung anak niya kay Hagar, ay uh, kap kaalis lang nito. And so, andun pa rin yung pain. Ha? Andun yung pain nung, nung separation niya from promise niya. Now, uh, let's look at the command one more time. Why did God, God ask 
Abraham about this. Bakit ito yung hiningi ng ating Panginoon? You know, God is a loving God. He's a kind God. And um, yung kanyang hinihingi kay Abraham seems to be unconceivable or unimaginable because he's asking Isaac, who is actually Abraham's seed. At yun yung kanyang ika nga pinakapuhunan para magkaroon ng marami pang mga anak magkaroon pa ng mga susunod na lahi o susunod sa kanyang mga lahi. Now, based from our story, you'll find two reasons why why God asked him about this. The first one is to test the authenticity of the uh, authenticity and depth of Abraham's faith. Now, pag tiningnan mo itong story ni Abraham, this is just one of the testings he received from God. You would notice in some of the testings, yung, yung ila nag-pass siya, yung iba nag-fail siya. Now, Warren Wise be listed this different test in the life of Abraham. First, there was this family test when he was asked to get out of the country and leave his family. And you know, he left and he passed the test. Meron tinatawag na famine test. When they were uh, in the promised land na, yung, yung pangako ng Panginoon sa kanila, nagkaroon ng famine, and they left that land and went to Egypt. Nag-fail naman siya doon. And then we have this fellowship test, uh, merong fight test, where he defeated a lot of kings, merong tinatawag na fortune test. He, he, he did not... Uh, get the wealth of the Sodom and Gomorrah. Tapos meron tayong tinatawag na fatherhood test when Sarah got impatient with God and suggested that Abraham have a child by Hagar. So nag-fail siya dito. Kasi later on, sinabi sa kanya ng Panginoon, Ismael is not going to be your um, uh, in uh, heir. All right? And then he was even sent. Ito yung tinatawag natin na farewell test. And so that's the first reason. He wants to test the authenticity and the depth of his faith toward God. The second one is to remind Abraham that he is to be adored as the giver of that gift and not the gift per se. Now, humanly speaking, we tend to focus more on the gift and not on the giver. Now, if we're going to look at the life of Abraham, uh, Isaac was given to him as a gift. Very precious. Napakalaga nito. Now, sino si, si Isaac? Isaac was Abraham's only son. Uh, and uh, God even mentioned this. He mentioned that, that Isaac was his son, his only son, and he's going to, to be the future of his race. So, pag tinignan mo, napakahalaga ni uh, ni Isaac sa kanya. At kung sakali, kung sakali, baka magkaroon ng problema na mag-focus si Abraham dito kay Isaac. Kay Isaac. And so, the command was given to him, the request was given to him, and this time, are, we are going to see if Abraham is going to let Isaac go and obey, uh, obey the command of God. So, why did God ask uh, Abraham to give Isaac because God wants him to remember a certain fact here that he is none other than God, that he is and no one else is the real security, the real source and hope, and that he needs to anchor on this thought or on this truth. Just like Abraham, Christians are not exempted from this kind of testing. You know why? Because because. This is God's design for us to know where we are when it comes to our spirituality. A test is designed to prove our faith. We are going to experience this in many ways while journeying our Christian walk here on this earth. When we become a Christian, we are automatically enrolled in this what we call school of faith. All believers all believers will face different trials. Although not all believers experience the same trials of faith, we, none of us, will be exempted. Every one of us will have our own testings. And we must realize that God's tests are tailor-made for each child of God. And each will experience a kind or a unique kind of trial. 
Now, what is that to us? Now, well, just like Abraham, uh, is there an Isaac in our hands right now? Is there something or someone that is of great value to us? Be careful for the tendency is for us to worship the Isaacs that God put in our hands, that when it is time for us to release them, we find it so difficult to let them go. You see, real testing is from the Lord, and the obedience to it will bring real blessing. This kind of trial will come to us, so be ready, uh, be ready to pass the testing. But how? How are we going to pass the test? Just like uh, in our story, you'll find the second principle here. Complete obedience is required to pass the test. Complete obedience is required to pass the test. Now, how will Abraham respond to this seemingly irrational request? Is he going to argue with God? Will he hesitate or will he waver or will he become so indecisive? Di ba nangyayari sa atin yon? Yung kapag ayaw nating i-let go, nagdadalawang isip tayo. Uh, will Abraham be bargaining with God? So let's read verse 3 to find the story here. Look at verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and look, two of his young men with him and Isaac, and Isaac his son. And he split wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Now look at the response of Abraham. Uh, uh, pag tinignan mo yung kanyang, yung kanyang ginawa, there was no complaining. He rose up early in the morning, right? no refusal, but a quick and silent obedience showing his acceptance of God's will, showing his total obedience to what God wants to happen. He demonstrated his full trust in the Lord. You'll find that he was, uh, there, there's no hesitancy. He did not even question. He did not even reason out. He responded positively and sets off to do God's will. You know what I have learned from here in this passage? Our obedience will demonstrate the hugeness of our faith to our living God. Our, our, our obedience will manifest our true uh, understanding of who God is. The author of the book of Hebrew uh, said, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. What is that? That is faith. That is faith. You know, merong hinihinging napakahalaga. Hindi nag-atubili itong si Abraham. Abraham was willing to let go of this Isaac. That's faith. That's faith, mga kapatid. One commentary says, Though this seemed to contradict the divine promise. Abraham was able to rise above the trial and trust in the resurrecting power of God. So also Christian readers must sometimes look beyond the experiences of life in which God's promises do not seem to be fulfilled and realize that their resurrections will bring those promises to fruition or fulfillment. Abraham heard God's word, and immediately Abraham obeyed it by faith. As I mentioned kanina, he did not ask why. He did not demand explanation. He believes God's promise, and he knew that God will never contradict God's promise. Ano yung pangako ng Panginoon? Mula kay Abraham, magkakaroon ng maraming uh, uh, binhi mula sa kanya. That's his promise. And Abraham was believing that promise. And he he hold on to that promise. Uh, in Genesis chapter 21, verse 12, sabi doon, binanggit doon, Isaac shall be, uh, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So, so malinaw yon sa isip ni Abraham. Kahit ibigay niya si Isaac, God will still fulfill his promise. Abraham believed that even if God allowed him to slay his son, he could raise up Isaac from the dead. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 18 to 19, it says here, It was he to whom it was said, In Isaac 
your descendants shall be called. Verse 19, he considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a time. Now, gaano kalaki yung pananampalataya ni Abraham? Abraham believed that God will bring back, even though, even though Isaac will be slain. Kahit mamatay itong si Isaac, kahit ihandog pa niya ng isang daang beses itong si Isaac, he knew very well that God will fulfill His promise. And from Isaac, lilitaw yung napakaraming mga binhi, napakaraming mga anak mula kay Isaac. Now, uh, look at the statement of Abraham in verse 5. We go back to Genesis chapter 22, verse 5. Ang sabi dito, Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad, that's Isaac, will go over there and we will worship. We will worship. Oops, magandang pakinggan yun, ha? Always remember this. When we obey God, we worship God. You cannot separate obedience from worship. Worship is not just long singing. Worship is not just long prayer. Worship categorically, if I may say this, worship is always manifested by our obedient life to Him. And He said here, and we will worship and what? We'll return to you. Naniniwala siya na kahit ihandog niya si, uh, si Isa, kahit na ibigay niya si Isa as a burnt offering, as a sacrifice, kahit mamatay, muling mabubuhay at ibabalik ng ating Panginoon. What we can see here is this. Faith does not demand explanation, but faith rests on the promises. You see, when when God sends trials to us, ito yung kadalasan response natin eh, why? Or, or maybe we ask, why me, Lord? Oh, bakit sa akin nangyayari mga bagay na ito? Right away, we want God to give us explanations. The fact that we ask our Father for explanation suggests that we may not know ourselves as, as we should, as we should, or God, we, we do not really understand Him very well as we should. Now, let's look at the passage once again and see that, that the thoroughness of Abraham's compliance. Tingnan natin yung detalye ng pagsunod ni Abraham when it comes to exercising his faith, when it comes to a showing or manifesting that faith in our God. Notice that he obeyed to the most detailed portion of the command. Look at verse 6. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. By the way, ah, dagdag ko lang. Isaac is a type of Christ. Uh, yun nilagay yung kahoy dito. That's a type of Christ carrying the cross. All right? I, Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac's hand. And he took his hand, the fire, and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Now, look how Abraham uh, expresses faith to God. Look at his response. Ang sabi niya, God will provide. God will provide. As he climbed Mount Moriah with his son, Abraham was confident that God would meet every need. Alam niyo, nakakataba po ito ng puso. Nakakatibay ng pananampalataya. Sa panahon po ng pandemyang ito, yun ang malaking tanong eh. Lord, saan kami kukuha? Yung mga nawalan ng trabaho, Lord, saan kami kukuha? Yung mga nahihirapan, saan kami kukuha? Well, I can always point you to the God of Abraham, which is also my God and your God. God will provide. Sa sagot na yun ni Abraham, there was no trace of any doubt. Now, this, this answer of Abraham is actually a testimony to his son Isaac regarding his faith. Remember that they are in the school of faith, and Abraham was showing to him what, what, what is faith all about. Now, this reminds me about our responsibility as fathers or even as parents. We ought to be demonstrating that kind of faith to our children. 
Kung gusto mong maniwala ng lubusan ng ating mga anak sa ating Panginoon Diyos, ipakita po natin ito. We as parents, especially the fathers, mga kapatid, we ought to be demonstrating this kind of faith to our children. As we teach our children about trusting God, we ought to manifest, we ought to show to them about trusting God completely in all areas of our lives. Look at verse 8. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walk on together. Verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built the altar. By the way, yung altar na ito, hindi ito yung, yung sa, sa mind natin, yung may mga, may mga maliit na pasimano, may mga nakalagay na mga riburibulto. Hindi yun ang altar na sinasabi dito. Now, it, ito yung altar na ginagamit na kung saan they will build a huge uh, place na kung saan kahoy ito, at doon nilalagay yung handog. Gano, kung gano'ng kalaki ito, it's like a tower eh. Tapos susunugin mo yon yung handog na yun. Uh, hindi siya napakadaling gawin ha. Now, I had the opportunity to witness this kind of uh, altar where they are burning their dead, yung kanilang uh, sakripisyo sa Nepal. I saw how they build this big, this is huge uh, place where they place the dead and they will burn it. So malaki. Parang iniisip ko po, yun lang yung bawat bawat galaw ni Abraham will always give him the opportunity to think twice tutuloy ko ba to itutuloy ko ba to now of course that is only my perception ha pero nakita natin dito eh silently Abraham obeyed him. look look at verse 9 again it says here then they came to the place of which God had told him and Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Verse 10, And Abraham and Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Now, when Abraham raised his hand with the knife, the examination, the testing is over. And he passed the test. He got a 100% passing mark. Uh, 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 Kasi po nung tinaas niya yon, sa mind, as a heart ni Abraham, his son was already offered. Right? Naibigay niya na ang, ang kanyang anak na si, si Isa. And here we'll find the next principle that will echo this truth. Ano yung katotohanan? Tinitingnan natin, real testing is from the Lord and the obedience to it will bring real blessing. What's next? Uh, we go to point number three. In times of trials or testing, God is watching us and is ready to reward, to give his reward to us or to reward us. Um, look at verse 10. Let's read verse 10. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not stretch out your hand against the land. And do nothing to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son. And ulit na naman yun, ha? He was willing to let go of his very valuable son, Isa. Verse 13, Then Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket, of, uh, thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up, of, uh, for a burnt offering in the place of his son. Abraham called the name of the Lord, the Lord will provide. Uh, I'm sorry. Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord, it will be provided. Verse 15, Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing, that obedience, that uh, stretching of his faith. Sabi dito, because you have done this thing and have not withhold or withheld your son, your only son, indeed I will greatly bless you 
and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand which is which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. Verse 18, In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Folks, listen. Go to your Bible. I underline you in last part na ito. Because you have obeyed my voice. Malaki pong bagay na makita sa atin na kahit napakahirap ng pinagagawa ng Panginoon, may katumbas na biyaya ang pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. Look at verse 19. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived in Beersheba. There is always an afterward to the test of life. Meron tayong tinatawag na biyaya na, na, na ibibigay ang ating Panginoon. God will never waste any suffering. God will never waste any obedient response coming from us. Job said in Job 23.10, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tested me, I shall come forth as gold. I shall come forth as gold. So what did Abraham receive? Abraham received several blessings from God. He received a new approval from God. He received a new son. Remember, huh? in his mind, patay na si Isaac. But, uh, but, but God, in, in a sense, spared Isaac. A new assurance. Now, Charles Spurgeon used to say that the promises of God never shine brighter than in the furnace of uh, affliction. What two men did on a lonely altar would one day bring blessing to the whole world. At tayo po mga kapatid, tayo po ay testimony, tayo ay patunay ng biyaya, kasama tayo doon sa mga nabiyayaan dahil sa ginawang o pagpapakita ng pananampalataya ni Abraham. And then, then uh, uh, Abraham also learned a new name for God. And what's that name? Jehovah Jireh. Naku, lahat ng Kristiyano alam ibig sabihin ng Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will be seen. Or simply, the Lord will see to it that He will be providing to us. On the mountain, on that mountain, the Lord will provide. Now, the lesson about testing of our faith are timeless. This is actually the true meaning of true worship. When tested, exercise our faith, faith that God knows all things and that His tests are beneficial to His children. Now, let's sum it up. Real testing is from the Lord and the obedience of it will bring real blessings. 1. Faith obeys completely the Word of God. Faith surrenders the best to God, hindi yung mga tira-tira. Remember, very valuable si Isaac. Uh, faith surrenders the, uh, the best to God, holding nothing back. And then faith waits on the Lord to provide all one's need. Hindi ho si Abraham ang nagproduce ng ram. Pero sabi niya, the Lord will provide. He was just waiting. Wag ko tayong mauna sa Panginoon. Minsan yung blessing tayong gumagawa eh. Tayo yung nag invento Kapag nagbigay ng blessing si Lord, I am very much sure, katulad ng sinabi ni David doon or ni Solomon, walang, ano yan eh, walang pain. The Lord gives blessing and there's no pain in it. Alright? So, uh, God bless those who will or God blesses those who will show that kind of faith through that obedience. But always remember this, God does not provide until personal sacrifice has been made. So the question that we're going to answer this morning is this, are you holding something valuable that causes you to, to be hindered in serving God fully? Do you have possessions that control you? How about your occupation? How about your job? How about your plans? How about your dreams? How about your, your relationship? Meron bang hinihingi si God sa iyo? And He's asking you to let them go and let me be 
what I'm supposed to be. Let go and let God. Again, let's be reminded, trials and obedience are linked by faith. True obedience is brought by our true faith to our true God. Now, always remember this. When we say, I trust God, we are also saying, I believe Him, and I would just allow Him to control my life, even in the times of trials and tests. So mga kapatid, meron bang hinihingi sa iyo si God? Well, let it go and let God. Let go and let God. Let's pray. Lord, may we imitate the faith that Abraham showed to us. Sana Panginoon bawat sa amin maging masunurin sa inyo sapagat nakikita po namin your great intention is for us to be blessed. But help us, Lord, to be willing to do our personal uh, sacrifices. Help us, Lord, to do our part in really stretching our faith, manifesting that kind of faith through our 100% obedience sa lahat ng iyong pinagagawa. Purihin ka, O Diyos, sa pangalan ng Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's worship and giving. Uh, Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10 reminds us that uh, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will flow overflow with good wine. Let us pray, Lord. You are a promise keeper. We thank you that uh, we can honor you today with whatever we have produced and earned. We want to give you the best part of it because you deserve it. And from you, from you, Lord, come all things that we enjoy and you are blessed with. We pray, Father, that you will use this for your kingdom. May it help those who are in need. And uh, we know, Father, you will keep your promise, Lord, that you will provide overflowingly all our needs. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next Sunday. And uh, don't forget, don't forget to go out and uh, share the gospel and go out and be a big difference. Be a catalyst of change. God bless you.